Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, special guests and special friends. James Earl Webb would greet his customers like this into his store, Webb City, a.k.a. the world's most unusual drugstore. James Earl Webb, the creator of this amazing store, was born on August 31st, 1899, in Nashville, Tennessee. Little is known about his childhood, except that James was a hard worker. His dad was seriously injured in a truck accident when he was nine years old. He had to leave the family of five kids. He left school and began making money by setting pins at a bowling alley, selling lemonade, and delivering papers. Then his family moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. By the time he was 20, he started working and managing a drugstore called Economy Drugs. He made some wacky drugs like Wahoo Indian Bitters and Doc Webb 608. That was how he became known as Doc Webb and was famous around Knoxville for being one of their best known pharmacists without a license. From working so hard, he had a nervous breakdown. He had a friend who owned a small drugstore in St. Petersburg, Florida. His friend convinced him to leave Knoxville and come be his partner. Doc took the family and moved to St. Petersburg. He arrived with $5,000 in 1925 as a partner. The Great Depression was on its way and stores started to close, so he bought out his discouraged partner. He named the tiny 17 by 28 foot store Webb's Cut Rate Drug Company, located in a rented building on 9th Street and 2nd Avenue South. In a year, he was on his way from rags to riches. Hi, my name is Sherry Webb Treadwell. More important, I'm the granddaughter of J.E. Doc Webb. Do you remember anything special or personal that Doc Webb told you about his childhood and teenage life? Yes. Due to an accident um, of his father, at age nine, he had to take over the leadership role of his family. That small drugstore became what was known in its heyday as Webb City. According to Doc Webb, the president and founder, it was America's first one-stop shopping city. It had 77 stores, it took up 10 square city blocks, packed with parking and shopping. It had 1,200 employees. Webb boasted that his store had more to offer than any other store in America and for cheap prices. Webb City did not only offer department store items, but also food, drugs, services, appliances, furniture, dry cleaning, haircuts, exotic pets, and their famous homemade ice cream. It truly was the home of the world's most unusual drugstore. I am a Troy Webb. I am the youngest grandson of J.E. Doc Webb. Can you name places in the store that you worked in? Yeah, I can. I uh, originally started my career at Webb City, um, what we called Chicken Day. And they sold chickens for nine cents a pound. And my job was to load the chickens inside the, uh, the bin. What was your favorite department in Webb City? Actually, it was a floor. My favorite floor was the fourth floor because that's where you found things like the entertaining things, the dancing chicken, the mermaids, the kissing bunny. How do you think this all happened? Through hard work, creative marketing, entertaining showmanship, and a determination to succeed. He cared more for his customers than for his money, but being himself it ended up being a $30 million retailing complex. One of his most memorable marketing styles was the sack em high, sell em cheap method. As long as he had the products, he sold them at very low prices and the customers would come. At times, he would take a loss just to get the customers in the door. He always sold below his competitors. They even tried to sue Doc in a price fixing lawsuit that he won. Also, he would give his customers IOUs, especially during the Great Depression, so they could pay him later if they didn't have the money then. Do you think the sack of high and selling the cheap method was a good idea? I do. I think today uh, there, there wouldn't be a Walmart or a Walgreens or many places without the stack of high and selling cheap. You never knew what to expect at Web City. For instance, on Topsy Turvy Days, you could find pantyhose at the cigar counter or canned green beans in the hardware department. This kept the customers interested. Web City had the first escalators in western Florida. He zigzagged them from floor to floor, so customers had to walk by sales and specials on the way to where they were going. One time, he sold Web City dollar bills for two days. First day for 95 cents, and the second day for 89 cents. He sold a total of 4,500 Web City dollars. On the third day, he offered to buy the bills back for $1.35. Most of the money had already been used in Web City. James E. Webb, Jr., son of Doc, was a chip off the old block. He claimed the invention of the first 10 or less express lane that you will see at any grocery store today. That was also another innovation of Web City. Did you think the crazy deals in Web City were a good idea? Absolutely. One of the crazy deals that comes to my mind that I thought was crazy because I was a child was what Topsy Turvy did. And what 
Topsy Turvy Day was um, you, he would advertise green beans for nine cents a can. He loved nine cents. But the green beans were in the shoe department. You had to find where they were. If you thought Doc was a great salesman, then he was an even better entertainer. His parking lot sometimes was like a three-ring circus, and he was the ringmaster. Beautiful poster girls usually surrounded him, if it was on a parade float or a horse. He rode elephants, did high-wire stunts, and he even was shot out of a cannon. He would do anything to please his customers. On his fourth floor, there were live mermaids, dancing chickens, a chicken playing baseball, and kissing bunnies. These also made the customers come to his store. His son had an idea for Web City Little Supers, which was a convenience store with gas pumps. But Doc didn't agree with the prices of it, so he didn't expand it as his son wanted. This was a little slip-up on Doc's part, because if he expanded this idea, it would be worldwide like it is today. So instead of expanding this way, he expanded to Pinellas Park with a small department store there. But this didn't work because it was not like going to the main one store in downtown St. Petersburg. What was your favorite gimmick in Web City? Well, I think the most famous gimmick in Web City was the live mermaid show. Doc would advertise all the way up and down the East Coast, come to Web City and see a live mermaid. And everybody wanted to go to Florida to see a live mermaid. Did you have a secret place in the store that you liked to go to? Yes. Actually, my secret place were the secret places. They were um, secret uh, in Doc's private office. He had a panel that only you had to know about it, that it would open up. And it had a back staircase to get out of the store in case he needed to leave quick. But while you were going through that, you went through the area called the switchboard. And that's when the switchboard people would sit there and actually literally pull the plug in and push the plug out. It was the old-fashioned switchboard that you see in the old movies. And it was interesting because the ladies would say, Hello, Web City, how can I help you? And they would ask for whatever. They could, Just a moment, please. And they'd plug in, and they would let me do it. Let me, I thought it was exciting. One story you could compare Web City to is Walmart. Even though it was after Web City, it was a lot like it, because it has today about anything you need. It didn't have as much stuff as Web City, like you can't get your hair cut there, but a lot of things you can get there. While Walmart went nationwide and Web City stayed in St. Petersburg, I feel if Web City went nationwide, it would be just as big as Walmart. In all, Web City survived five decades of events including World War II, natural disasters, and even the Great Depression, but what he could not survive was the development of suburban malls. Those malls drove his customers away from his store. That is what made him close down the store so suddenly. Even his family didn't know about it until he was in the newspaper. Today, all that is left in his honor is a store named Web City Little Super. How sad were you when Web City closed? Well, it was very sad. I can remember one day that I drove by and saw it being knocked down and destroyed, but the, the, the strange part was that because of the creation of the mall that Doc Webb really had built and designed, uh, it was a mall that took him down. Life was so fascinating that it cannot be described in 10 minutes. Since Webb City was like the thing that kept St. Petersburg alive and filled with tourists visiting the store, it even made a musical of its downtown success of the 100th anniversary of St. Petersburg.